Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to the course on developing soft skills and personality. We are on week 5, module 5 and this is lecture number 29, uh, the penultimate lecture of uh, this week actually. We have last two lectures for uh, this week and in the last two lectures, I have decided to focus on net etiquette as well as email etiquette, which I will do it in the next one, but I will also start introducing email etiquette in this one. And before I start, uh, let us take a quick recapture of what I did in the previous lecture. The previous lecture was completely focused on how not to send emails, particularly how not to send bad emails. So, I said that in order not to send bad emails, so you should keep in mind certain things like you should learn to use formal salutation like uh, if you are sending it to a senior teacher, it should be respected sir, dear sir, respected ma'am, dear ma'am and so on instead of saying hello, hi because uh, the person at a higher level uh, needs some kind of respect shown in the form of salutation itself. Avoid excessive use of capital letters, especially when it is not required, do not use them at all. Avoid slang and colloquial language. Avoid mixing up of two languages, any two like English with the Hindi, English with the, uh, Telugu, English with the Punjabi, whatever it is. Avoid mixing up these two things in your writing style because it will cause confusion to the reader and you are just taking it for granted that uh, the reader knows both the languages which you are aware of. Avoid text language in formal communication. The way you send SMS, okay, that is fine, it is a short message service, so you can make it short. But in an email, you can afford to write in full sentence form. So that you should keep in mind, you should avoid that text language or chat language and uh, you should try to send emails properly in full sentence form. Also you should show regard for punctuation, spelling and grammar. I uh, did not actually tell you the rules as such, but we try to arrive at these kind of rules by identifying those bad emails which I discussed with you. And uh, last but not the least, I said that mail only to the concerned person. So, in the last email that we discussed, the person has sent to almost the entire IITK campus, all people including director to the uh, worker and then the student, when he was looking for one particular professor who can give him internship. So, avoid this kind of confusion, send only to the most concerned person. Now, keeping those things in mind, let us look at netiquette as such okay. and then why netiquette and then what are the email etiquette you need to follow as norms. Look at this interesting quotation, the real danger is not that computers will begin to think like men, but that men will begin to think like computers. That is the main core idea that we need to keep in mind that the danger is that men will start begin to think like computers and in fact already they are not only thinking like computers, but they are also behaving like computers, behaving like machines. So, that is something that you need to realize when you are involved in communication using the net. That is why we need netiquette. Now, what is netiquette? It is a portmanteau word that is two words combined to form a new word. And what are those two words? One is internet, the other one is network. So, internet network, you have net and etiquette from which you have the later part, the suffix and then you have the word netiquette. Now, internet network you understand, what is etiquette? Etiquette is an umbrella term, it is an overarching term, it is a governing term for rules governing socially and culturally acceptable behavior. Simply speaking, it is about good manners that you are supposed to follow 
when uh, you are involved in some kind of social uh, behavior. Now, if you combine this etiquette with net, what does netiquette indicate? It refers to the correct, proper, polite, acceptable, social, official, professional norms, behavioral patterns or expected decorum for using the internet or the cyberspace for communication purposes. So, netiquette simply is about your code or conduct on the internet. What kind of rules in terms of politeness you should be following when you communicate with somebody on the internet. So, that is netiquette about. Now, if you ask me the question, why should we know this? Why netiquette? Am I not aware of this? Now, if you look at the way internet has evolved, it gives you the answer. Actually, internet has really contracted the world into a global village. So, the entire world has become small because of the connectivity we can make so quick, so instantaneous and this has made it like a village. But if you look at what communication is doing, you will realize that communication has become much more a complicated process. The world has shrunk in size due to connectivity, but then the complexity of human uh, communication has been on the increase. So, it is not decreasing the communication complexities which are involved when you are interacting with uh, people at a social group interpersonal level. Now, despite the flow and exchange of information in various channels, now we have so many channels to express our views, discuss with people, Facebook on the top and then mailing list, we can join group and then get mails, blogs, you can just write your expression, opinion freely, forums and chats. But the question still remains whether communication is taking place in all these forms in an effective manner or not and obviously the answer is it is not as effective as it is desired to be. <coughs> now, that is the reason why we should have netiquette. In addition, the internet actually enlarges the vistas of human mind. So, it helps you to broaden your human mind, but has naturally narrowed down values of the human heart. So, people have become emotional cripples. So, emotionally they have become handicapped, they have become disabled, they are not able to function strongly using their emotional skills. That is why we have soft skills. But on the other hand, apparently communication has widened thanks to internet. But since people are not able to use their emotional intelligence appropriately, using the network, what is happening is that there is increase in hate mails, sites violating privacy policies, hacking of email identities. Today, we hear of uh, uh, cyber crimes which are involving identity theft, hacking identity, email identity, Facebook identity, Facebook password is stolen okay, and somebody puts different kinds of pictures of you. So, all these things are happening because of the reason that human heart is getting contracted, okay, whereas the mind is getting enlarged. People misunderstand and lose precious relationships built for years by a casual click of send button. So, they do not think before sending the message, they very casually click the send button and then they lose precious relationships or in terms of company, they lose precious goodwill built on decades. Now, why netiquette again? Sending emails has become the most used and abused form of cyber communication. In the past, if you look at uh, the way letters were drafted, especially in uh, corporate offices, companies, even educational institutes people were trained, okay. people were this uh, stenos and clerks okay. and then office assistants, PAs 
that is personal assistants, they were all trained, they were all trained by a mentor or even professionally they were trained to write letters in a proper format. But if you look at the current scenario, there is no training for sending any email and even the nuances of sending effective letters are completely ignored. The fact that nobody receives any formal training for sending emails calls for netiquette. Emails are written without any planning or preparation and sent abruptly without caring for presentability. Ignoring fully the human aspect of communication involved in the transaction process. What is the result? The result invariably is miscommunication. This could be possibly avoided if people learn, understand and follow simple norms of communication in cyberspace. So, that is again the reason we have netiquette. Now, let us look at some basic netiquette norms. These norms appeal to any kind of use in the net in general. To begin with, the first and the basic rule is that you should not forget that the receiver is a human being. You should not forget that the person at the other side who is getting your email or getting your message is also a human being like you. What happens? when you sit and type on a blank screen, you just get a feeling that you are actually interacting with a machine, but actually you should go beyond and visualize the other person who is sitting at the other end who is going to receive this mail or message from you. So, when you type messages, you should type messages as if you are interacting with him or her face to face. Ask yourself the honest question whatever you are writing, okay, let us say it is a hate mail you are writing, you are angry with somebody and you have written everything. Would you say the same thing if the person is just sitting before you, 100 percent you will not tell the same content, you will tone it down, you will put it in a different manner okay. and even when you see the person, for example, you shout at the person. And then, and then if the other person, let us say she is a girl and she starts crying because she is innocent and then she feels she is undeservedly being accused by you. The moment you see the other person crying, you realize that maybe you are uh, uh, overreacting and then you stop. Whereas, in email, you are not able to assess the feedback immediately. Only when the mail is sent and the person reads it fully you know how the person is going to respond by another mail or by another uh, uh, phone call in response, but otherwise you have no idea of what the other person is likely to feel. But it is important that you should empathize, you should feel into the shoes of the other person before sending the mail. When you will keep in mind the human element, you will not send curt messages that will hurt the receiver's sentiments. So, always keep the other person in your mind and then you should also understand that uh, it is about giving the human touch. Okay. If you realize that you are a human being and the other person is also receiving is a human being, try to give this uh, human touch, a personal appeal even if it is a formal letter. They should feel that there is a warmth exuding from your email. How can you do that? Through very suitable use of words. Now, even in formal letters nowadays, some uh, business offices accept even smileys and emoticons just to indicate that you are not really serious, you are just joking or you are light hearted. And as you know, if you just type the keys, so colon and then a dash and then put one closing bracket and then press enter. So, it will create, create a smiley and then nowadays even you can insert lot of smileys when you are sending email and the kind of smileys. Okay. So, that actually gives a feeling that you are giving a 
personal touch, you are indicating to the other person that you are uh, not angry, you are happy about the communication, but you are just pointing out some limitation in the way the other person communicated to you. It is not rejecting the person, but it is rejecting the way something has been done to you. Such additions also tell the receiver how much care you take in communicating your message with the right tone and attitude. So, consideration for others is thus the cardinal netiquette principle one should always bear in mind. If you do not have consideration for others, I would say that do not send the email and if you do not know how to do that, go and meet the person okay, or try to at least talk on phone. Email can act as bombs and it can just completely destroy the relationship. So, you have to be very careful. So, do not forget that human component that is the rule number one. The next one you should always remember that written words can be stored permanently. Once you type and send it, even people say when you type and your computer is storing it, the words are stored permanently, they are stored forever. What does it mean? Since these words can be stored permanently, one should be very careful in choosing the right words for communication. Choose the wrong words, choose the impolite ones create a feeling that you are very rude, aggressive, insensitive and it can completely destroy the relationship at the other side. Most of the times the emails which are sent casually can return with so much malignity. So, the person sent had no intention of really hurting the other person, but wrong use of words. The other person sends with lot of malignity, ill feeling that the sender regrets throughout his or her life for having sent that one thoughtless mail. So, you send it and then you regret for your life as why did you send that. So, before sending give a thought that whatever you send can be recorded permanently and because of this, so you should be very careful with written words and especially when it is sent through email. The next interesting aspect of net and the netiquette norm that you should remember is that ironically, ironically is like it appears to be opposite, but it is true. The receiver controls the sent email. What does it mean? Usually you the sender you think that you have control over your emails, but the fact is it is the receiver who controls the mail once it is sent. You have absolutely no control over your emails once you press the send button. Once you press it, you do not have any control and once sent, it is the receiver who will have full control over the mails. What will the receiver do? The receiver decides even if you have requested that the mail should be deleted immediately, whether to delete or store the mail for future use. So, you may say something bad about another colleague to this person through an email or you have sent some jokes about your boss on the email or you have shared some personal intimate thing with another person on the email and you requested the other person that as soon as you read it, you please delete it. Okay. Now, even after you have requested, it is absolutely with the other person to decide whether to delete it or not. So, you have no control. So, once you send it, you are completely losing control of the email that you have sent. Now, the worst case scenario is this, the receiver also can use it against you. Send it to numerous others, get a printout of it and post it on public notice boards and put you to shame. Now, in uh, corporate offices, some people do not know that the administrator can always check the emails of everybody. Okay. There is a master uh, password and that can be used to peep into anybody's email anytime. So, the corporate office generally gives individual email IDs, but then they have the master control. So, I heard of an incident where one uh, uh, male colleague 
sent a kind of uh, email proposal uh, expressing his very intimate feelings to another female colleague who is working in the same office. Now, before the colleague could respond whether positively or negatively, the administrator saw this and reported to the manager. The manager just took a printout of the letter and then went and displayed it on the notice board. And then he just circulated copies to all offices throughout the country. Now, it was such an embarrassing thing, it was a very shameful thing for the person. Finally, he had to quit the job, also it was a very uh, important and lucrative job for him, there was no other go, he had to quit because everywhere people started making fun of him, laughing at him, behind him there were jokes and he could not uh, uh, face the humiliation. So, you could be embarrassed and you could be put to shame in general public just because of an email that you sent. There are other reasons, people can not only react immediately, but they can store it for ages they can store it for years, after 10 years, 20 years they can send the mail back to you and you might have changed your opinion and then they can show that you are contradicting your own opinion which you made a norm for all others and you are violating that norm, again they can embarrass you that way. So, remember that and the other important netiquette norm that you should remember in general is whenever you are communicating socially using the internet or trying to contact with anybody, trying to maintain relationship with anybody, be ethically correct, be ethically correct. Why should you be ethically correct? It is something that you will ask. So, it is like my computer, so my mail I am sending to anybody and as the old saying goes, all is fair in love and war may be modified to suit the mindset of many internet users as all is fair in love, war and cyberspace. They think that uh, anything goes in cyberspace, you write whatever nonsense you want to write, love mail, hate mail, abusive mail, post abusive pictures, post abusive videos, so nothing happens, do whatever you want. And that is the impression with which many network users believe when they post materials which are unethical. Materials which are unethical, you know very well that whatever you do, you won't do it for you, okay, for your sister, for your brother, for your parents, for your relatives, you won't do it. But if it is a third person, you don't mind doing it. Especially if it is a stranger, you don't mind uh, using all the things which are abusive and posting it on the net you know it is not morally correct, okay, but still you think that you will do it. So, you should be ethically correct and you should not post any unethical comment or you should not lower your ethical standards for the internet. Again when you meet the same person face to face and when you maintain eye contact and talk to the person you cannot say certain things. On phone, you can say certain things better than meeting face to face, okay. but even you maintain your decorum. But when it comes to internet, you think that, oh, I can write anything to this person because the person is not just before me. And whenever the person opens the inbox of the mail, then the person sees it. So, I do not care. Now, that attitude is wrong it is lowering your uh, standards and then somebody who wants to develop his or her soft skills and personality that is totally unwarranted. Email ethics, internet ethics should govern your behavior every time. You know what is morally good or bad, choose the good when it is easy to choose the bad one. The other reason for not selecting unethical means is that it will give you some short term gains. To gain a truly professional image, one has to maintain high ethical standards that will sustain you throughout 
and then that will give you long term gains, long term benefits. You become popular in the social network, okay. but suddenly somebody puts something that you posted 5 years before and it damages the entire reputation you gained over 5 years through hard work and then lot of goodwill that you earned. So, be careful whatever is written can be reused against you. So, write only the good things. Whatever you post which is unethical, so will give you only short term gains, but then it is going to affect you in the long term. And because of the risk of being caught in unethical practice is very high, you cannot hide anywhere in the internet. Okay. It is like you are always on the surveillance, once you log in you can be caught anywhere, anytime, it is not difficult to catch you. So, keep that in mind and once caught, it can damage reputation gain for years. From your childhood, you are seen as the local hero, people look up to you. One small thing mischievously, mischievously you put and then people realize that you are not the good person they thought you to be. So, be ethically correct all the time when you use social network and just as a concluding thought, I would like to read out a quote for you and want you to watch the joke that is just uh, below which is self explanatory. It is from Porter Stewart, the quote on ethics. It says that ethics is knowing the difference between what you have a right to do and what is right to do. The difference between what you have a right to do. You have a right to use your computer, you have a right to use your data, you have a right to use your internet, you have a right to send email, okay. you have right. But what is right to do is not to send certain kinds of emails, message to someone who does not deserve it, not to behave or not to misbehave not to send abusive contents. Although you may think that it is my right to do whatever I want in the internet, but you need to think that what is right to do. What is right to do may not what you think as the right that you have to do. So, understand the difference and then to uh, knowing the difference will actually keep you ethically correct. And if you look at the picture, so on the left side there is a person who is sending all kind of uh, uh, abusive content to the other person which is actually making the person at the receiving side completely lose control of uh, uh, her emotions. Okay. Now, this should not happen when you are communicating. I hope this uh, lecture builds up your uh, image status as a very good uh, netiquette user, as a very good uh, person who knows the netiquette norms. In the following lecture, let us look at very specific email etiquette that will again hone you as a person who can use the net very efficiently and effectively. Thank you for watching this video, I will get back to you in the next lecture. Thank you.